What is going on, lovely people? This is Metacosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our endocrinology playlist. We're talking about cell signal transduction. In the last video, we just talked about the G protein. Today, we'll talk about ligand-gated ion channels such as GABA and how benzodiazepines and barbiturates affect this beautiful receptor. We will also talk about serine and threonine kinase receptor protein and the story of the TGF-beta, which can lead to fibrosis. This is my endocrinology playlist. Please watch these videos in order for maximum retention. We have repeated this so many times. You have glands that listen to the pituitary and glands that do not care. The ones that listen, obey the pituitary, they are slower because the hormones are fat soluble. But these ones have faster water soluble hormones. Why faster? Because the receptor is on the outside. It's on the cell surface. That's why we call them cell surface receptors. And this is the tale of two hormones, the lipid soluble and the water soluble. Today's topic is the water soluble ones. If the hormone is water soluble, the receptor has to be on the outside, on the surface of the cell. The intracellular receptor is for fat soluble hormones. We have discussed this before. G protein was the topic of the last video. Today, let's start with the ligand gated ion channels. Lipid soluble was discussed before. The G protein was discussed before. What is it with the ligand gated ion channels? You have the acetylcholine and the GABA. The GABA story is very important. So in the first half of the video, we'll talk about the ligand gated ion channels. And in the second half, we'll talk about the serine threonine receptor proteins. In the next video, we'll talk about receptor tyrosine kinase. You do not want to miss this because this is insulin, baby. What is the largest family of cell surface receptor? The G proteins. This is how glucagon work, for example. G is coupled, which means adenylate cyclase converts ATP to cyclic AMP. Boom, protein kinase A, and then you add a phosphate. When you add a phosphate, it's a kinase. When you remove, it's a phosphatase. You activate or deactivate. When this receptor is bound to GTP, it is active. And this happens when the water-soluble hormones attach to the receptor. But what if the water-soluble hormone detach? Then it's time to deactivate. And now GTP will become GTP. And then when it comes back, we activate in a beautiful cycle. So here's GTP, which means we are active. And therefore, the alpha subunit is going to kick the beta and gamma in the teeth. Leave them alone. Don't forget, they are anchored to the cell membrane by the gamma subunit. There is a lovely anchor here. GTP with alpha subunit, that's active. And then, that's active. How do I deactivate it? You need the GTPase, which will end the G protein's career. GTP becomes GDP. GDP is here, alpha, beta, and gamma. See, where's the alpha? It's here. Where's the beta and gamma? We'll get them from here, combine them together. This is alpha, beta, gamma subunit bound to GDP, which is inactive. If you want it to activate, get that GTP going, and now it is active, which happens exactly when the hormone binds its receptor. Pause and review. Now, ligand-gated ion channels. We have the acetylcholine, the GABA story, the glutamate, and IP3. What's the story, morning glory? A ligand will come and bind to its receptor. That's easy. We know this already. And then a conformational change will happen. All right, that's old. And then a channel or a pore will open in the cell membrane. The pore is not just a hole. The pore is a very complex protein structure under the microscope. And then what's going to happen? Ions will influx or efflux. They will come into the cell or leave the cell. What kind of ions? Could be sodium, chloride, potassium, calcium, any ion, any electrolyte. These are positives or negatives. Therefore, when they go in or go out, they change the membrane potential. No kidding. And this is a fast signal response. Boom, it's the switch. Remember the story of the two engineers. The engineer that clicks on a switch, boom, it's very fast. Because this stuff is water soluble, not lipid soluble. Do you remember the story of the neuron? Yeah, check out my physiology playlist. We talked about the action potential ad nauseum. During rest or the polarized state, the inside of the membrane is more negative. We call this the resting membrane potential. Upon activation, aka depolarization, the inside becomes more positive. Why? Because sodium has entered. Sodium is positive. When sodium comes in, the inside becomes more positive. Hashtag activation. But what if? chloride entered into the neuron chloride is negative when a negative enters in the inside becomes more negative and this is inactivation hashtag hyperpolarization so let's say that this neuron is in your brain if sodium enters your brain gets excited if chloride enters your brain gets inhibited and that's why benzodiazepines and barbiturates are sedatives and hypnotics they inhibit your brain why 
because they let chloride enter into the neuron. Hashtag hyperpolarization, hashtag inactivation. And how do they do this? Through GABA. Let me tell you about GABA. GABA is an inhibitory neurotransmitter. If A secretes GABA onto B, B will be inhibited. Of course, because GABA is inhibitory. But what if A secreted GABA on another neuron that secreted GABA? Now B will be excited because inhibition of the inhibition is excitation. If I lost a lot of money, this is a loss. But if I avoided the loss, it's a gain. Disinhibition, double inhibition. The loss of a loss is a gain. The inhibition of inhibition is excitation. So GABA is always inhibitory, but the end result could be inhibition or excitation depending on how you rearrange the neurons together. When sodium enters, it is activation. But when chloride enters, it's inactivation or hyperpolarization. GABA receptor. When this receptor gets excited, chloride is going to enter into the neuron. Chloride is negative. What's going to happen? Hyperpolarization or inactivation? Your brain will become inhibited. Your brain will become sedated. Your brain will become hypnotic. This GABA receptor is not just a piece of trash. It's a very complex protein structure because all the receptors in your body are freaking protein, as we have discussed before. Where does GABA bind? GABA binds here. Where does benzo bind? Benzo here and barbiturates here. The end result is what? The end result is we're, we're going to open that receptor. We're going to open that channel. Get that chloride in. Hashtag hyperpolarization. That's why GABA is inhibitory. Benzos are inhibitory. Barbiturates are inhibitory sedatives and hypnotics. Here's the GABA receptor alone, when it's closed and when it's open. What happens when it opens? When it opens, chloride is gonna rush into the neuron and chloride is gonna inhibit my neuron, hashtag hyperpolarization. What does benzodiazepine do? Benzodiazepine will make this channel open more frequently. It increases the frequency of the chloride channel opening, which means chloride is going to enter into the neuron more often, causing more inactivation. That's why benzodiazepines are sedatives and hypnotic. It's all about the GABA receptor. How do barbiturates work? A different mechanism, slightly different. They increase the duration of each opening. So now chloride will have more time to enter into the neuron. Hashtag inactivation, hashtag depolarization. So benzodiazepines increase the frequency, barbiturates increase the duration. So you can write barbiturates like this, and just remember, barbiturates, duration. Pause and review. That was the story of the ligand-gated ion channels. Let's talk about serine and threonine kinase receptor protein. This is the story of TGF-beta, which can cause fibrosis, Mullerian inhibiting factor, which inhibits the Mullerian duct. Go back to your reproductive embryology. Activins and inhibins to activate or to inhibit and bone morphological proteins. Let's get into it. Serine kinase and threonine kinase receptor protein. Let's go. What's the greatest example? TGF-beta. So let's talk about TGF-beta. Here's TGF-beta coming and binding to its receptor. The receptor has two pieces, type 1 and type 2. TGF-beta is going to come and bind only to type 2, not type 1. And then when type 2 is active, type 2 is going to activate type 1. Steps of activation. The TGF-beta comes and binds to the type 2 part of the serine kinase, threonine kinase receptor protein, which leads to receptor oligomerization. Monomer plus monomer is dimer plus another monomer is oligomer. Now type 2 is active. Type 2 will activate type 1. And then type 1 will do what? Phosphorylation, baby. Add some phosphate. Activate me. Activate who? Activate that SMAD protein. The end result is new proteins. Yay! This is a very commonly asked question in pathology. Hey! Hey, student! What's the cytokine that can trigger a fibrosis? TGF-beta is the answer. It can lead to fibrosis. In the lung, it's called interstitial pulmonary fibrosis, which causes a restrictive lung disease. Go check my pulmonology playlist. Or it can lead to liver cirrhosis in the liver. Here's a question for you. Why do male patients with liver cirrhosis experience gynecomastia? Let me know the answer in the comment section. Pause and review. In the next video, we'll talk about the insulin story, receptor tyrosine kinase. This receptor is like a strong, independent woman. More on that later. Pause and review. This slide is amazing. 
Most of my videos are here on YouTube, but I have some premium doozies on my website medicosisperfectionalist.com, such as this endocrine pharmacology course. Learn more about estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, T3 and T4, insulin, how to give insulin, how to calculate the insulin dose. What are the different types of insulin? Learn more about cortisol and all the others in 15 videos, plus cases, plus notes, plus my perfectionist ultimate notebook and a mind map. You can download all of this today at medicosisperfectionist.com. I also have a kidney physiology course on the same website. And for a limited time only, you can get a 40% discount towards anything on my website. Just use discount code KIDNEY. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.